We look at an industry in need of more workers. A student is a four-time national speech and debate qualifier. We quiz people about world geography, and we look at what kids are doing for off-season. Hi, I'm Kobe Dowen, and you're watching Eagle Zone. With the technology sector needing more people to fill jobs each year, it might influence students to be a part of the field. One of the technology fields is becoming more popular because more of our tools and gadgets rely on it. Eagle Zone's Peyton Head joins us with that details. Cybersecurity is a topic that has become more important over the last decade or so with the fervent improvement of the internet. Today, we talk with an expert in software reverse engineering. You might not even know what that is, but Mike Cam with Dakota State University says it does matter to you. Think about how software impacts our lives every single day. Um, it can be something as simple as when we click our button on the garage door opener, that garage door opener has some software that understands that signal, tells you to open your garage. Or it could be very complex things too, like our power grids or critical infrastructure is run off of software. And if that has vulnerabilities in it, bad actors could take over those really critical services that we need every day. In reverse engineering, people take apart software, try to figure out how it works and what it's doing. Ham could go into a lot more detail, but says people in the field can figure out how to protect software important to our lives and how to fix it. He also says, if you study this field, there will be a job for you. The common theme we hear is that the amount of jobs that are being demanded each year is outpacing the amount of people that we're putting into the field. A problem for people needing to hire, but an opportunity for students. He adds that if you have a mind that's always curious how things work, one of those jobs might be calling your name. For us who might want to be employed somewhere, it's fantastic because there's just so many opportunities out there. Um, it can put you in different geographic regions, it can put you in different like pay scales or different types of industries. So you have a lot of options to go through. It's kind of a cool thing. Like stated before, cybersecurity needs workers. In the U.S. alone, there are over 600,000 unfilled positions in cybersecurity. There are over 3.5 million unfilled positions in cybersecurity globally. Thanks, Peyton. Peyton will continue looking at other specific careers in the cyber field on future shows. Abbey Central's first class of EMR students has finished training. The students graduated in a ceremony held at the ATEC Academy at the end of the third term. Janae Chapman, Kaylee Nas, and Aurelia Stegler make up the inaugural group. They still need to pass state tests. Next year, the school is also adding EMT training, so students can leave high school equipped to be certified in that level. You can still join those classes next year if you're interested. The EMR course is the first term, and the EMT course run run from the term two through term four. The Aberdeen School District has released the names of its first round of hires for next school year. School board members approved the hires during its meeting this week. Those hires include a move from longtime social studies teacher Kent Hansen. Hansen has taught at the middle and high school levels. He'll be moving to Holgate Middle School as an assistant principal. There are still positions the school needs to fill. Those include multiple special education teachers, a math science job, social studies, and a Spanish teacher. It also includes a position at the ATEC that was tough to fill the year and proving tough again. That's an auto teacher. The school hasn't received applicants for that job, but it's in a popular program that draws a lot of students. You don't need to be certified teacher to apply. It's a common for administration at the ATEC to hire people out of the industry and work with them to get their teaching certificate. You can find more information about any of those positions at the Employment tab of the school district website. Debate students look forward to the national tournament after their big state win. And that event is nothing new to the senior on the team. Eagles owns Caden Galbraith joins us that story. Caden? Brianna Woolman is a four-time qualifier for the national speech and debate tournament. Her coach hadn't seen that with one of his students before. Brianna is the very first one in our about 70 year history to be a four time national qualifier. And so it's absolutely a very unique and exciting opportunity for her. Brianna Woolman has achieved a major feat for our school. Being the first to do something is always exciting, especially when it can be such a historical event for the school. As a freshman, she, had been the, she was the kid that was watching national qualifying and final videos, taking notes on it, figuring out what it was. Um, any waking hour she's working on speech or debate. So she just simply outworks her opponent and combine that with some natural talent, 
really helps. Um, in speech and debate, it's mostly consistency because you can have periods where you put in a lot of time, but if you like stretch yourself way too thin, maybe at the beginning of the season, then by the time it's at the end and it's national qualifiers or it's state, then you don't have the energy to put yourself like forward. Brianna has shown a lot of work to get here and it has not gone unnoticed. Working hard and showing dedication shows you'll make it far and achieve big things. I, since I started competing in oratory my freshman year, fell in love with the activity because of the like opportunity it gives you to talk about anything you want. Um, it's like storytelling and talking about recent issues, all things that I love. Being able to like tell my story and choose the things I want to talk about is just really important to me. The national tournament takes place after school is out in June. They travel to Iowa for the event this year. Watch the school district website over the summer for results. Thanks, Caden. So far, there are nine students from Aberdeen headed to nationals, but there are still chances for others to go. The last chance to qualify is the end of April. Geography is the study of Earth, but how well do you know it? Eagles Own's Max Vidal tests students to see if they can name a country without seeing where it is on the map and just its outline. Take a look. This week, we asked a couple people to name that country. So we went around the school and asked a couple of students, but of course, we also asked a couple of teachers. Looks like a pencil. <laughs> so this first country has been all over the news lately, so everyone should know it, right? Canada. I have no clue. Russia. That, that is correct. Korea. <laughs> Russia. Russia. That is correct. So. That would be Russia. Russia. This next country was a little trickier, but surprisingly, a couple people knew the answer. Me, please. <laughs> Bolivia. Egypt. That is correct. Egypt. Never Egypt. Mm. Mm. Egypt. <laughs> I have no idea. Hmm. Egypt. Now the third country has just had the last Summer Olympics held there. So I was assuming everyone was going to know the answer to this one. Oh, Italy. Alaska. Italy. Alaska is, is not a country that is a state. Oh, wait, wait, lock in. Alaska is not a country, it's a state. It's a state. Can you name a country for me? <clears throat> that Italy? The Philippines. <laughs> that's Japan. That is Japan. Japan. Japan, I mean, you see, that's Japan. And this next country has been all over the news for is what felt like an eternity. So if anyone has been paying attention, they should know the answer to this, right? That looks like China. <laughs> China. China. <laughs> China? That's China. That is, that is correct, that is China. For our last question, I thought it was the hardest. I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. Wow. Uh, mm, uh, North Korea. Like Chile or something like that? I have no clue. Chile? I'm gonna go with Israel. Upside down, but yes, it is Chile. Chile. That Chile. is Chile, correct. Chile. Now this next contestant was so impressive and quick with the answers, I had to put him all by himself at the end of the quiz. All right, who am I here with? All right, Kenny. Um, what country is that? Chile. Chile? That is correct. What country is this? Egypt. This is your. That is Egypt. What country is this? China. That, that is China, correct? What country is this? Russia. That is Russia, correct? What country is this? Japan. That is correct. That is Japan. That was upside down too. Okay. I did better on that than your Shakespeare quiz, Max. At least I knew the U.S. We'll be right back after these messages created by media production students. Yo, look at this better, just hit on. Wow, that's cool, but don't spend your money. Okay, but there is another game tonight that I know we can win. All right, bro. I actually just hit on the other bet last night. I'm gonna buy a vacation now. Well, you better quit while you're ahead, though. You don't wanna lose too much money. It's a slower time for sports with the winter season ending. Eagle Zone's Gavin Bitts joins us to explain what we're working on for the spring season. Gavin? Thanks, Colby. First, there's one state event coming up that overlaps part of the winter and spring seasons. The eSports team is heading to Brookings for the state. The sport isn't sanctioned in South Dakota yet, but there is still a state event. Chess, Rocket League, and League of Legends teams from Aberdeen will be there. That takes place March 22nd. Looking ahead to spring sports, 
We'll take a look at the boys tennis team on next week's show. We'll also see how the boys and girls track teams are looking, preview girls golf, and share a story about softball on future shows. The spring teams have better weather this year to prepare for the upcoming season. Snow kept them indoors through much of April last year, and Aberdeen doesn't have as many indoor rec options as some bigger cities. Eagles own Xavier Ness talked with athletes about how they train during winter months. Our school has many sport options, but several of those options take place outdoors. It's hard to practice those when there's snow on the ground. Jake Archigal works with athletes to stay in shape during the off-season. Yeah, so off-season has a few different options. We have specific programming for our football athletes if that's the only sport they're doing, right? If they are moving into basketball or track, we're gonna transition them into that as well. They can obviously come to our lifts accordingly. If they're not doing any winter sports, they can show up for our off-season lifts. Golf and tennis are two sports affected a lot by the winter season. Avery Tennant plays tennis and says she misses playing on the court, but takes place in another sport during the winter. I do dance at the arc. Freshman Cole Brust is a golfer. He misses the course in the winter. Just not really being able to go outside and do it, because winter, you know, just have to do it on the simulators. He isn't in an off-season sport. Uh, mostly just do workouts for just trying to get better and work on the swing. These assets have made strides this year as they improved. They want to make sure the winter doesn't stop that momentum. Last year I went from six singles to two singles this year, and I went from not even playing any doubles to playing one doubles. And me and my partner, Julia, we made it to the finals. If you're gonna, if you're looking to get better, trying to prevent those injuries, we gotta get you in, gotta get you lifting, get you nice and strong. Consistency, is the key. Reporting for Eagle Zone, I'm Xavier Ness. There are some coaching changes coming to Aberdeen. Michaela Archgo stepped away from her basketball and cross country jobs to spend more time with family. And Ken Hansen will be resigning as the pole vault coach following this track season after he took the principal job at Hogan. You can find those positions and others on the employment tab of the school district website. Colby? Thanks, Gavin. We have a couple more things to share with you. First, don't forget to fill out your book madness bracket in the library. The deadline for that is Wednesday the 13th. If you're hearing this message after the deadline, try submitting it by Monday the 18th. Miss Archigo might still take it. And congratulations to the Educator Rising students making their way to the national competition. The school board recognized them at their meeting this week. Alexis Ketterlin, Sasha Usman, and Kylie Clemens all earned a trip to nationals. Congrats. That's all for this episode of Eagle Zone. You can always watch our stories whenever you want by scrolling down the Eagle Zone section of the school district website. That's aberdeen.k12.sd.us. With Eagle Zone, I'm Kobe Dowling.